Welcome to my kitchen. I'm so happy you came to join me because today we're going to be making pierogies. I'm going to start making some fillings uh, for my pierogi and one of them is uh, the sauerkraut with uh, so I saute a little onion uh, uh, one small onion and a 14 ounce can of uh, sauerkraut and I'm going to I also put that in the bacon fat that I rendered when I was making those BLTs this morning that's what kind of uh, made me think, oh, maybe I better make that filling. Because this process takes a couple of days. You make the fillings, then you make the dough, then you're starting to make your actual pierogi. So we're going to simmer this down uh, to where the cabbage is nicely, uh, you know, cooked through and a little brown maybe. And then what I'm going to do, uh, I'm, I'm cooking up some potatoes, red potatoes. Now, I use uh, about one potato, I mash it up, and I put it into that uh, sauerkraut uh, filling. The potatoes are used often with, uh, with these types of things, because with the fillings, because they absorb what? Moisture. So, once you've got your sauerkraut nice and done, you add a little potato to it. Uh, I'm cooking up uh, quite a few potatoes here because I don't just make one thing. So I'm going to make some potato salad and I need about three boiled potatoes for my fillings, which I have three of. I put it in my cheese filling, I put it in my sauerkraut filling, and I make a potato filling with, with cheese. I, I use Velveeta cheese. So this is just the beginning. I'm going to cook this sauerkraut down and Put it away and then when I'm ready to make my pierogi, uh, it'll all be set and cold. Okay, so now we're looking at that sauerkraut that we started up. It was a little bit of uh, a rendered bacon fat and we sauteed the onion in there through a 14 ounce. Oh, the onion was about one uh, medium sized yellow onion. Sauteed it in the bacon fat, added a 14 ounce can of sauerkraut. I did rinse the sauerkraut, uh, squeezed it out, and then added it to the uh, simmering onion and the bacon fat. And I added a little sugar, maybe a teaspoon, some black pepper. And I am now, what, no, what I did is, I, I was telling you that I used potato in each of my pierogi fillings. I'm making the sauerkraut one right now. And I mashed up with potato and I added it to my sauerkraut and I mashed that down and I'm just gonna just leave it cool off completely and when it's really nice and cool I'm gonna uh, just put it away until I'm ready to make my sauerkraut pierogi. I've got this uh, I wanted to show you because I'm gonna try a little something different uh, with my cheese pierogi. We're gonna go over here and take a look sauteing a little onion just a little bit maybe uh, oh I'd say uh, two tablespoons and I'm gonna get that just to, so that it gets a little bit golden not much then I'm going to add some spinach to it and um, let's let's see if I can get that without moving this camera around too much uh, I'm gonna throw a little spinach on the top Oh, my hand looks like Godzilla. All right, so there we go. So here we go. We're going to do that. Okay, so I'm going to let that saute a little bit. As for the cheese filling, uh, we're go we already mashed those potatoes up, you know, that I cooked up when I made my potato salad. Uh, and I mashed them down, gave them, and they were already uh, salted because I cooked them with the, in salt. Uh, I might add a little onion powder maybe maybe a little cottage cheese but here's the main thing here uh it, this is a twisted twaddle <laughs> okay twisted twaddle twisted twaddle and that is farmer's cheese and twaddle means cheese and twisted means fat 
This is not a low, low fat cheese. Uh, and then I'm going to put, oh, about a tablespoon of uh, sugar and a teaspoon of salt. We're going to break up that uh, cheese into my glass bowl and an egg, and we'll be right back. Okay, so here we are, and I'm going to bring this camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, it's like so, I guess. And here's, uh, I've got the cheese in here, okay? So the only way with this cheese is just you have to break it down with your hands. Crumple, crumple, not break it down, but crumple it up. It's got to be completely crumpled up. I took this out, as I said, room temperature. I try to do what I preach, you know, so we get this all done. We'll make the cheese, and then we'll, we're going to start making the pierogi. And you'll find it a lot of fun. And it's a great day to do it. I'm locked up here. I was going to play Mahjong this morning, but I wasn't going to fight that battle of getting to uh, to the library, uh, the village hall where, they, where we meet, just the five of us. I don't know how many girls finally decided to come, but I just couldn't see it for myself. I don't want to. I don't want to drag myself in the snow and worry about who might slide into me, right? So we'll, we'll do it again next week. Hopefully it'll happen next week. All right. So this is all kind of nice and well, it's being a little stubborn here. So this is a farmer's cheese. You know, it's hard to get this cheese. The jewel must have uh, 50 different kind of cheeses in a special little area there. All kinds, all kinds. You'd think they'd have one little package of farmer's cheese. Oh my goodness gracious, you make breads with this and cakes with it. And, and there's more, uh, oh, Mariano, same thing. They don't have it either. And it's really crazy when you think about it. So I have to go back to the Polish deli again that they always, I can count on them that I can get it. And what's funny is I don't understand some of these stores and who is putting in um, the pro buying the product. I have to rinse my hands a little bit. Who supplies these products to these stores? Now we can't blame COVID because this already, I, I had this already before COVID even came into play. So now we, uh, those, uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, my potatoes that I told you I mashed up with the spinach and a little bit of onion, okay? I'm just looking for some flavor. You know, I never added spinach before, but I thought, what the heck? I had a brainstorm, and I'm going to go for it. Now, I'm going to add my egg. One egg, okay? I'm going to add a, a teensy bit of onion. Just, you see that? Two shakes, that's all, and onion powder. All right, so here's the sugar, because this cheese tends to be, well, let's see. It's, you know, it needs sugar. It's, otherwise it's very, um, I don't know, tasteless or a little bitter maybe. A teaspoon of salt. Okay. And let's see. Let me get my spoon. Work this egg in. I want to see how it tastes before I add anything else. You can make pierogies with any kind of fillings you like. You know, this is, I've made them with strawberries in the summer, with plums in the fall. Oh, I love it. And you know what? It, it tastes like dessert then. And I, we, we, when we make them, we, we sprinkle them with a little sugar after we have them, after they've already been fried up. And I tell you, cutting into that with the strawberry juice pouring out, it tastes so wonderful because the dough is so delicious, you know. I have to break this up better, smooth it down before I add. I'm going to add those potatoes in now with the spinach and a tiny bit of onion. Uh, maybe two tablespoons of onion, okay? And you saw how much spinach I put in, how much, hardly anything. You could put a little parsley in here too. I'm going to mix those potatoes up, mix them up. I'm going to see how this tastes. I pulled out that uh, cottage cheese. I'm really not sure if I'm going to use that because I really don't want them to be wet. I just thought, well, it's a little creamy, the cottage cheese. 
So this is wonderful. I kind of get my, well, this is a sturdy uh, bowl, but it's so darn heavy. You have no idea. So here we go. Good. And you know that little bit of spinach kind of makes it look nice. Okay. You know, every uh, <clears throat> every culture, nationality, however you want to put it, has their pasta, right? The Italians make the raviolis. <clears throat> the Asians have their pot stickers, which I love, the pot stickers. And uh, so many. And why? Because, you know, they didn't have a lot of money those days. The women were home. They were cooking. They were baking. They, they had to make the food stretch. And what better way than to make noodles? All right, now I'm going to taste this because I don't know where I'm at with this. Hmm. That really is good. I'm going to add, I am going to add just a little bit of this cottage cheese. A teaspoon. The flavor of this is really good now. You see? That's it. Oh, uh, I took the uh, last two potatoes that I had. I uh, uh, peeled them peeled the skin off, added some salt, mashed them down, added some um, uh, butter to it. Uh, I like the uh, Land O'Lakes olive oil and sea salt butter. It says butter with olive oil and sea salt. I don't know, it's just really tasty and it's perfect. I put that in there and some, uh, some Velveeta cheese, okay? And I'm just getting that warmed up and mashed it a little better. I'm going to just cool those down, let that kind of cool down and evaporate so there's no moisture. And that's my second filling for my pierogi, cheddar potato pierogi, the ones that my grandkids just said, Grandma, you got any more of those? So, you know, I had to start, I had to start out with those roses because it makes me happy and I hope it makes you happy. Now, we're going to put the camera down here, and I hope this is going to work out. <clears throat> uh, I found a glass bowl. It's, it's way heavy. I'm going to have to find something else so you can see better what I'm doing. I'm learning, you know, trying to do my best here. So we're going to crack some eggs. And we start out with four eggs. And uh, my dear cooking people, Always get everything at room temperature, okay? So pull your eggs out before you uh, start doing this, maybe an hour or two. Pull them all out. And then you you can, uh, you, your sour cream, okay? I use uh, uh, six, let's see, it's 16 ounces. That's one pound of sour cream. You'll need about a tablespoon and a half of butter, okay? I've got that melted. All right, you've got about a teaspoon of salt, and I've got some a pitcher of cool cold water in here. Okay, so we're going to use just a little water. Um, I would say maybe, um, well, half a cup, maybe not even that. So uh, you, you watch how I go uh, along with this. This is a recipe that I got from. Um, this was my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law gave me the recipe. It, my mother-in-law and her mother, it was from her mother actually, and it's way back. And it's a, it's a recipe that you'll find, it's a sour cream recipe. And um, I, what I like about it is that uh, the dough is fluffy, it's tender, you know. So, because, so you use the sour cream, four eggs, a teaspoon of salt, about a tablespoon of butter melted, and about, uh, oh, I don't know, a quarter cup of water, let's say. And um, you're going to, uh, and six cups of flour. Okay, so here we go. Now I'm going to lower this down so you can see what I'm doing. 
Okay. So we're gonna beat those eggs. Beat the eggs. Yeah, that is working. See, now you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna add my salt. I'm gonna add my melted butter. Okay, now I'm gonna add the sour cream. The whole thing goes in like so. I'm gonna beat this in there. Uh, <clears throat> when I was dating my husband, he took me uh, uh, to my uh, mother, my future mother-in-law's house when I was 16 years old for Christmas. And uh, this is when the whole family was there and I got to meet everyone. And she had the pierogies. And my, my busha made pierogi too, but my busha didn't use sour cream. She, and I'm gonna do that recipe too so you can see it. It's just uh, uh, an egg uh, at or two eggs and then you add about some flour you add flour to that maybe uh, two cups of flour and it, it works a little differently we'll do that but let's not talk about that because we're gonna I'm gonna get confused okay so we're going to just get that sour cream going and uh, frankly it's quite simple once you get this now I'm gonna add the first two cups okay I'm adding the first two cups here we go. Well, the first two cups. And when we get this all going, then um, we're going to let it rest. And then a little uh, after about an hour or so, I'll come back on and we can start filling. If you were following all this, I did, I did make the fillings uh, before. I made two fillings so far. Okay, so it's pretty wet. You can see it's a pretty wet. It's not a dough yet. So we're going to take the rest of this here. And I'm going to just... I have already measured out six cups. So we're just going to go like that. I like to go... I don't want to throw it all in at one time. Soon I'm going to put it out on the table when it starts to form into a nice dough. Hmm? starts to form into a dough. Right now it's still a little too wet, but we're getting there. Let's go. We'll do a little more flour. A little more flour. We're expecting a lot of snow tonight. I don't know, tonight and all the way into Thursday, so. Oh well, you know what? It's a good day for making uh, dishes like this because we're stuck in the house, you know, and then, and then we'll have something good to eat besides, so that's not a bad deal. <laughs> all right, we're gonna add a little more flour. We're almost ready to bring this thing out on the table. Then the fun begins. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna, in fact, I am gonna put some flour out on the table so that you can see. All right, here's the fun part. This is not a, a difficult dough really to make. Let me see if I can lower this anymore. Oh, I can. All right. So now, let me get this back in here again. And, you know, they freeze well, too. So that's another nice thing. I have them always for Christmas. I make about 80 pierogies around Christmas time. And um, I make them ahead of time, like a week before or so. And I freeze them up and then thaw them out and that's about it. And that's about it. 
So we're going to get the rest of this little flower out of this bowl. All right. Mm -hmm. This big old bowl, I don't know where I got this from. It could have been from my cousin Yolanda. And she gave it to me. She said, you know, I used to put uh, my potato salad in there because it looks so nice. Okay, so we're going to put this butt over here in the sink. <clears throat> and now I'm going to start to work with this dough. All right. Put some flour on my hands. So... It's fairly simple. The ingredients are very easy. Four eggs, 16 ounces uh, of uh, sour cream, teaspoon of salt, and we start, and six cups of flour. My mother-in-law told me that grandma used to make these uh, these pierogi, and she did it, you know, she would eyeball it. Oh, this much flour, oh, about that much. It all depends how it feels. You know how that goes. She said, so I sat with my mother one time, and I wrote everything down. Every time she put another cup in, I, I would write it down. So here we are. But they are absolutely delicious. You can buy the pierogies, but they're never going to be like this, never. They're good, but they can't compare to homemade. And this is a, this is a unique recipe. But I will make the other one too for those of you who maybe don't want to use the sour cream. You don't have to work this dough too much, but it can't be wet, of course. But the less you work it, the better. Okay, so we're just—it's not like kneading, uh, like bread where you have to knead it. Okay, so I'm getting there. And I am going to add a tad bit of cold water. She used to, uh, you know what that looked like, not even a quarter of a cup. My mother-in-law told me, she says, just add the cold water towards the very end. Somehow it, it does something. It brings it all together. And so that's what I do. Christmas time was always pierogi time. And you know, uh, Polish culture, we, we didn't eat meat at that time uh, uh, on Christmas Eve. So we had white fish and uh, my mother-in-law would make this wonderful uh, soup. Uh, and I still make that soup. It, it's, there's no meat in it. It's a tomato soup. In fact, you use Campbell's tomato soup. And you add some rice and potatoes to it, and it's just a delightful taste. My kids just love it. It has a nice flavor. So, you know, I think I'm there because I don't want to overdo it with the flour. Even though I'm allowed six cups, right? Okay, so what I want to do now, I'm going to cut this in quarters. Because I can't work with this, right? So I have to make it so... Now you see how it's kind. it's still... It's kind of wet inside. Do you see that? So I'm going to work that in there. So I'm going to cut this one. I make it in quarters. Cut it in quarters, like so. And then when I'm ready to make the pierogi, I help myself to each quarter. And that makes it really nice for... And you get about, oh, maybe 15 pierogi per, per uh, little ball of dough. There it is. It's nice. It's supple. You'll find it. It's very forgiving. Very forgiving. Very nice. Here's the next one. Okay. Here we go. Make it into a little like a baseball, huh? Okay. Here we go. Delightful. You know, kids, uh, like to play with Play-Doh. Well, here you go. Let the kids at it. <laughs> okay. This looks good. It's tender. There it is. Now the last one. 
Let's see where we're at. I think that's came together really nice. And I, I can't tell you enough about getting stuff to room temperature, okay? Don't start out with cold eggs and freezing cold. Uh, the sour cream, pull that out ahead of time. Melt your butter, etc. Okay, so what I do with this now, if you'll follow me over here, I've cut up some saran wrap into little sections. Maybe I could bring this up just a tiny bit so you can see me, okay? All right, so I cut up four pieces of saran wrap, hmm? and I'm going to cover this up because guess what? The dough has to rest. Me too, maybe, huh? Okay, here's the next one over here. Hello. Here we are. Second little roll. Look at Nice. Hmm? Like this. Okay. Three and four. Gonna do the same thing. I've got some saran wrap on this side because I like to stretch it out. And last one. There you go. We've got, I'll probably get about 80 pierogi out of this batch. So 20 a piece, approximately, depending how thin you roll it out, you know. So we'll, we're going to let this baby rest. And when we come back, we'll make some pierogies. Hi, here we are. We're going to be making those pierogi now. No more measuring, no more mix. We're just going to roll the dough out, fill it, and cook it up. So, I've got my pot of hot water here. You can see the steam just blew up in the air, right? So, I'm going to put uh, about oh, a teaspoon of salt in my cup in my hand. That's it. Teaspoon of salt. You can put maybe a little, just a little bit. Teaspoon is probably enough. I got the water nice and hot. Have my trusty little uh, uh, spoon there. And we're gonna keep that on low because that got it nice and hot the way I want it. I'm gonna drop this down and we are going to start. Okay, so oh, by the way, I put the, um, the cheese filling back in the refrigerator I want it to get colder and this one here is the potato and cheddar uh, not cheddar but a Velveeta cheese that I use okay and a little butter and it's in a previous video you'll see it I'm gonna run them all together so I'm gonna run them Laurie's gonna put it together for me I'm not a technician I just cook <laughs> right Chloe oh thank you all right so here we go Chloe had a challenge this morning because boy, the snow is pretty deep. And but we had to go out, do our business. And my little friend, my Mary next door to me is gonna shovel for me, for us. <laughs> and Skip will probably go out and do the, the little walkways. And she's gonna plow the driveway and uh, she's gonna get some pierogi for me. That's for darn sure. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna roll this dough out. And that cooled, I, well, I packed it up, remember? I put it in that saran wrap, right. And then I um, put it in the refrigerator. And here we are the next day, and we're just gonna have fun rolling on this snowy day. We're rolling, baby. <laughs> we're just gonna roll away. And we're going to get this down to where we like it. This dough really came up so pretty. I think it's because you guys were watching me. <laughs> now, I'm going to turn it around like so. All right. My mother-in-law gave me the recipe over the phone. I called her up one day, I said, I want that recipe, I've gotta make them. And she goes, really? She says, you know, I showed my sister-in-laws, they all said they wanted to make them. I had a tutorial <laughs> and she says, they never made them once. So there it is. And I've been making them 
for, uh, I don't know, 50 years. 50 years I've been making them. I wanted to make them. My mother never made them. You know why? Because my dad didn't like it. My, my dad wouldn't eat them. And so, you see, she was the, the, the pleaser. She was a pleaser. She only made what dad liked. So, here we go. Um, I'm going to now put some of this filling. I want to show you. I have it in this bowl. And I just drop it around the edges. Drop it around. It's nice and cold. Easy to work with. This dough does not work well if it's wet. Doesn't work well. Now I'm going to fold this over. Fold this over. It's quite thin right there, the dough. All right, so like so, okay? I'm going to use this glass for a minute. Now I'm going to cut it. Cut it. Cut it. There we are, see? Now I'm going to put a little flour over here for myself in case I need to dip into my hand. Now, here's the little pierogi, see? Look, like that. We got to make it look like pierogi, right? That doesn't look like pierogi, does it? All right. So we dab a little bit in the flour if we have to. And the trick is this thumb. You press down, you squeeze this down into a, like a ribbon-like. See? Does that look like a pierogi? There it is. Got to have the dimple in the middle and the little pretty furly edges around the sides. Beautiful dough. Seals up like magic. Huh? That means there was not a lot of flour because if you overdo it with flour, uh, it won't work. It's going to just come apart. And it can't be too wet. So you got to experiment. When you, all right, so there's the one, okay? And here we go. Now we do this one. And we do this about 80 times. Isn't that exciting? I think I'm going to get about 80 out of this. Uh, so what I also wanted to tell you is you don't want to do it. You want to make just one of these today. You don't want to do any more. You can freeze the dough. Remember I had, I made those, but here is another one. See how cute that looks? Look, that's pretty. All right. I'm going to make a couple more, finish up this dough, and get right back to you, show you what I do next. I wanted to show you the little glass I use to, to, to you know, just to cut them. They're just this, that's all. And look how cute they all look. See? When I get a bunch like this together, I can see two, four, six, eight, nine pierogies, let's say. Okay. And the pot is nice and hot. And so what we're going to do now is put our pierogies into this water. And they like magic. When they cook up, they're going to just plop right up and swim on top. There I go. So that was our first little batch. Okay. I'm going to stir that up a little bit. I don't want them to sit at the bottom because they... To stick rather, you know. I'm gonna bring this camera over so you could look into the pot. Here are the pierogies cooking away in a little bit of a salted water. Not a lot. I think I put about a teaspoon. So that's it. See how they start floating up to the top? Magic. This one's got a little bubble in it, doesn't it? Got a little bubble in it. Hook, hook, hook. Come on. Oh, you just don't want to do that. Okay. Whatever. Okay, here we go. All right. In a few minutes, maybe... Oh, I never timed this before. I just waited till they came to the top. Okay. And let them all kind of just... Maybe a minute or two. Are you all... Are you guys all happy now? Huh? No? Yeah, that's it. There you go. Okay, the hard part is holding this thing, making. <laughs> now I'm going to. I'm going to keep that there. I'm bringing this other pot over here. See, with my strainer, and I have it in a pot. 
I'm going to be taking these pierogies out of this pot here. They're done. See how pretty? And in the strainer they go. That's all, boys. You're going, you're getting out of the pool now. Getting out of the pool. <laughs> all right. Oh, look at, hey, I got three in one here. Holy cow. Uh, if you, when I told you about the little dimple in the middle and the style of the pierogi, we all have our style, right? Pierogies have a style too. All right, so I'm going to lower this water a little bit. I'm going to take this pot to the sink. I'm going to show you what I do next. I'm going to get some cold water. Get some cold water. And I'm going to Good them with cold water. Okay? That's it. I'm going to let them sit in there for a little bit and drain off. Hmm? I'm going to let them drain off. And I'm going to let them sit there for a little bit until they drain off. And now over here, you'll see that, what's this? Paper towels. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay. So now you see when I take them out of this strainer. I put them on the paper towel with some breadcrumbs. The reason for that is so they don't uh, stick together. Okay. Uh, after they cool down, I put them in uh, some freezer bags and that's it. And I'm going to drop a few more of these pierogies here. And so you can see, I'm just going to line them up here. See? Just line them up, line them up in on the breadcrumbs. Okay, like so. Let's see, these are the new ones over here. All right, I'm gonna sprinkle them with some uh, breadcrumbs in a little bit, and that's the end of that process. We're gonna start making. Uh, another batch with the sauerkraut this time. Hello. We're going to start now on our second roll. Here's the second one I have. And you know, I got 18 pierogi out of that uh, batch. So it, it runs about um, 20 pierogi uh, for each one of these. So you, get, you do get around 80 and uh, pretty nice, you know. Uh, now we're going to make um, the sauerkraut. Remember, we were making, I also have a video, I'm going to put that on how I made my sauerkraut. And uh, I have a little video which will precede this whole thing. And you'll get to see how I make. And hopefully, you, maybe you do the same or maybe you add a little something to it. I'm going to run this down just a little bit more. <clears throat> there you go. Okay, so we're going to roll this dough. We're rolling. Today we are rolling, rolling. All right. You know, I had the radio on earlier, and I don't know if that was a good thing, because it kind of sounds like somebody's talking in the background, and kind of distracting. So, here we go. A lot of times when I watch the new movies today, especially that, they have this doggone music uh, in the background. And you can't even hear what they're saying. Of course, it's partly because I'm old. And you, you just don't hear the same way. And they got the doggone music playing in the background. And I can hardly hear what they're saying. All right. So, we again, we rolled out that nice dough. <laughs> I'll tell you, it really is good today. Okay, so now we're going to make the sauerkraut. I'm going to roll this down just a little bit so you can see the sauerkraut. I have to push together like that. And here we go. I'm going to just continue doing this and I'll get back to you when I'm done with this plate. So what I have here now is the... Uh, the cheese filling that we made with uh, a little spinach and onion. I have already uh, started 
some of them I've got them ready to uh, put into the water and we're just going to continue with this and soon uh, this will be all there is to do they'll be done so we'll see you in a little bit still snowing looks like a blizzard over there oh and there's uh, my valentine's day door <laughs> i put some hearts on there right over the snowflake now we're going to go back into the kitchen and i'm going to show you We've got uh, the cheese pierogi. I had the most filling uh, for those, and that turned out to be 28 pierogi. All done, all cooked up. Hallelujah! And here we have uh, the sauerkraut, which I didn't have much of that. I only got, let's see, oh, 13 of the sauerkraut, and I've got 19 of the potato. So all in all, we got 60 uh pierogies, uh, uh, 13 sauerkraut, 19 potato, and 28 cheese. Yum, yum. I pan fried up uh, those pierogies for us for lunch today uh, with a little onion and some butter, a little onion, a little green onion. So pretty, all plated up. We've got sauerkraut and uh, potato with... Uh, Velveeta cheese and uh, cheese pierogies with a little spinach and onion, a dollop of sour cream. Oh, what a wonderful treat. Well, here's my story. I, I have to tell you that I plated up my little pierogi and I put them on my Christmas plate because my pierogi take me back to my childhood when my busha would make these pierogi for Christmas Eve uh, a vigilia they called it vigilia and all my cousins and my uncles and aunts they all came over and they ate in shifts in order to fit in at the table in my little busha's kitchen so like so many things in life uh, food and traditions bring us together, don't they? And you know, uh, it, 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 we had uh, what at the Vigilia, before we even start to eat, we had opatkis. And nobody would eat anything until every, every member of the family, even the children, they all got the little Christmas wafer and they went around and wished each other uh, health and prosperity and so I'm going to say that to you I enjoy your traditions with your family if you haven't made any make some they will always remember your 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 feelings and your your the emotion that we put and the love that we have for each other